Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent updates about that potentially dangerous asteroid that might collide with planet Earth in 2032. The asteroid you see is simulated right here, this is from NASA and you can find this website in the description, and the asteroid that was only discovered just over a month ago, in December of 2024. But in the last few days we've received a few updates about this asteroid, while also learning about its potential risks and even getting some of the first images. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, starting of course with a very brief overview of what we know so far. Here's actually what its orbit kind of looks like if you were to simulate this using this NASA visualization. And well here if we actually keep running this, around 2032 you'll notice that it's sort of approaching really close to where planet Earth is, roughly around December of 2032. So somewhere right here it essentially has a slight chance of hitting the planet. But the thing is, even as you can see from this simulation, the chance here is still pretty low. As a matter of fact, there's a much higher chance it's just going to pass somewhere between planet Earth and the Moon. And well, initially, when we actually talked about this a few weeks back, the odds of collision were approximately 1 in 80, which automatically made this the most dangerous asteroid known to us, placing it as 3 on what's known as Torino scale, basically a chance of collision over 1% and the asteroid at least 20 meters in size. But there was a huge uncertainty region as you can see right here, which meant that additional observations had to be done and done quick. And that's because by April of 2025 this asteroid is going to be behind the sun and it's going to be almost impossible to see it until its return in 2028. And so in order to estimate a much more precise orbit, researchers focused on two things. First was obviously additional observations, but the second was what's known as pre-detections. Basically relying on previous observations from as far back as 2016, trying to see if some of the previous telescopes detected this as well, thus allowing scientists to calculate a much more accurate orbit. And strangely enough, a lot of previous images did not really contain anything. For example, the 2016 search of the Subaru telescope data seemed to contain nothing. And that was actually a bad thing because these non-detections kind of suggested that maybe the chance of collision was even a little bit higher. But at the same time, the Gemini South Telescope, an extremely powerful optical telescope in Chile, was actually able to detect this using long exposure by focusing on the specific range of wavelengths known as the red band and the long exposure lasting over 12,000 seconds, which basically revealed this. These are some of the most recent images of this asteroid captured in optical light. And here the scientists tracked its motion, allowing them to create a new estimate, which has now been updated on that NASA website I mentioned previously, known as SNAILS. This is the website that basically keeps track of all of the potentially dangerous asteroids near planet Earth. And right now, only this asteroid has a relatively high chance of collision. It's now at 2.6%. And interestingly, this chance has actually been slowly increasing in the last week or so. It went from being 1.3% to 1.8%, then 2.3%, now 2.6. This is mostly because of this extra data received from some of these telescopes. But there is a small problem with these observations. This is a pretty small object moving away from us and actually moving really fast from us, so here there's still a lot of uncertainty. On top of this, this asteroid was observed when the moon was 70% illuminated, which actually dramatically increased the background light, thus increasing the overall error. And so right now there is still a lot of uncertainty about this asteroid and we're only going to get more certain about it after the observations with the James Webb, which will hopefully be done really soon, and then after the observations in 2028. But right now, based on the luminosity and based on the light variations, we already know a little bit more about it. And it's actually simulated pretty well right here. First of all, it seems to be elongated and that's because its brightness seems to change periodically as it spins around and it also seems to rotate once every 20 minutes. And in terms of size, NASA now believes it's at least 54 meters across, or 177 feet, possibly larger, possibly smaller. Here this is all based on reflectivity index, or basically the amount of light we seem to be receiving from the asteroid. And so if it reflects 5% of light, it might actually be much larger, if it reflects 25% of light, it might be much smaller. And so current size estimates are between 40 and 90 meters or 130 to 300 feet, which is likely for us much much smaller than the Morpheus, the asteroid that was redirected by the famous DART mission. You can learn about this redirect mission in one of the videos in the description. Which of course means that if we had to redirect this asteroid, a similar approach involving direct collisions would most likely work really well. 
And that's because this asteroid is at least three times smaller, but it's still large enough to produce a relatively large explosion if it does hit planet Earth. Going back to this image, you can see that it's actually very similar to the size of Tunguska meteor. And so in worst case scenario, if it does hit the planet, it will either produce an extremely powerful explosion somewhere along the line you see right here, or leave behind a formation very similar to the famous Behringer Crater or just Meteor Crater in Arizona. Here we're talking about a relatively large formation resulting from an explosion at least 300 times as powerful as the Hiroshima atomic bomb. So essentially this would be a very powerful localized event. It would not affect the whole planet, but it can still cause a lot of damage on the ground. Nevertheless, despite of this, even though there's 1 in 38 chance of a potential collision, the most likely outcome is what I showed you previously. Basically, a passage somewhere between planet Earth and the Moon at a distance of approximately 200,000 kilometers from planet Earth. Which is why most scientists are not panicking about this, because usually these predictions are pretty accurate. But more intriguingly, there's even a chance of a collision with the Moon. But right now this chance is only 0.3%. And the thing is, if this collides with the Moon, since the Moon has no atmosphere, this will be a much more powerful explosion. As a matter of fact, it will be powerful enough to potentially be visible from planet Earth, assuming you look at the Moon through binoculars. It's unlikely to be seen with the naked eye, just because the Moon is actually pretty bright. And if it does impact the Moon, it's going to create a crater at least 500 meters across, up to about 2 kilometers across much bigger than anything it would leave on Earth. But a lunar collision would not be dangerous to us at all, even if there are fragments produced. All of these fragments would be too tiny and would basically burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. But here a lot of things would also depend on what exactly this asteroid is made out of. Right now it's actually assumed to be either S-type, or maybe L-type or K-type, or essentially a stony asteroid. Which also means that it's most likely going to break apart completely in the Earth's atmosphere, and is actually even unlikely to create an impact crater, or even a tsunami if it hits the ocean. In other words, it's actually a lot more likely to create an airburst and to explode in the upper atmosphere. And these airbursts have actually been observed quite a lot in the last few decades. These are known as bolide events, and they do happen quite frequently, but we unfortunately never see most of them, because they're usually in remote locations. Although here, because this is such a large asteroid, this bolloid event is expected to be similar to Tunguska. A huge explosion, very likely affecting hundreds of kilometers. But honestly though, pretty much everything right now is just speculation. Mostly because we don't have enough observations yet, and because a lot of negative observations, or basically lack of observations from previous images in 2016, do not provide us with enough information and do not reveal any new information, especially when it comes to its trajectory. And so we're only going to know more after James Webb observations, which will hopefully be done before April, or might not even know more until 2028, until we finally see it again, once it moves closer to planet Earth. And at that point there are going to be two possible solutions. Either it's going to be recalculated to be a non-issue, or we'll have a couple of years to basically launch a mission to try to redirect it if there's a really high chance of a collision. And since we're talking about a collision producing 8 megatons of energy, this is definitely something we're going to be taking seriously after 2028. But until then, don't panic. It's still extremely unlikely to come close to planet Earth, and it's a lot more likely to pass between planet Earth and the Moon. But once we have some more updates, or once the impact probability changes once again, we'll come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on the same topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this show on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.